continues to reign supreme as the Lord of the Flyweights. In 1988, Michael Carbajal powered his way onto the boxing scene. Stamina, muscle, speed merged, earning him a silver medal at the Olympics. Narrowly missing gold, motivation blasted through disappointment. And in less than two years, he slugged away the NABF title from Tony DeLuca. The light flyweight champ is one of boxing's biggest superstars, pumping respect and popularity into a division snubbed in this country since the 30s. My weight division is something to look at because um, I believe that we're just as good as any fighters in any weight division. Um, you just got to give us a chance. Brother, trainer, manager Danny jumped in when Michael was 13 by converting their backyard and chicken coop into this makeshift gym. Carver Hall packs a monster punch in a division not known for bashers. The IBF belt came last summer with the pounding of Mugchai Kitakasa, making Carver Hall the first American war fly champ in more than 50 years. Perfect at 21-0 with 13 KOs, the 24-year-old brawler dodges the temptations of fame and big bucks that bring down the mightiest ring warriors. I want to become a counselor um, for the younger kids, um, for the teenagers that Teenagers that get in trouble, they're involved with gang relationships, um, drugs, everything, because I think that I can help out a lot because here where I grew up, I was around it all the time. I made it um, without getting involved in that, and I know if I could do it, anyone can do it. Carver Hall made his debut on TVKO this summer, winning every round against Hector Patry. Boxing is changing, little is large. Tonight, Fly Swatters will stay buried as long as he rules the ring. And we're ready for our first bout of the evening. The junior flyweights into action. The champion Michael Carbajal in a non-title fight against Jesus Chong. And as always, to call the action at ringside, let's go now to my colleague, WNBC New York sportscaster, Lynn Berman. Lynn? Thank you, Cambrell Marshall. The convention center buzzing with the news that the Holyfield-Tyson fight has been postponed. Now, one date to keep in mind is January the 27th. That's the day that Mike Tyson goes on trial in Indianapolis for a rape. So I would speculate the promoters would try to get the rescheduled fight in before the trial begins, perhaps look for a date in early January. But that's a pure guess on my part. I'm working, as always, with Joe Goose. And Joe, your reaction? to the delay in this fight well you know it's it's not good news for the boxing fans obviously but the good news is it's postponed and it's not canceled and uh, I think that we're gonna see that fight come off very shortly after the postponement and he injured his rib cage not in sparring perhaps weightlifting would be the call. Well, most likely they say it was a non-contact injury to his ribs so most likely it was something to do with uh, lifting weights stretching something of that nature all right let's talk about the heavyweights right. tonight Mercer and Morrison very unusual in the heavyweight division Two undefeated heavyweights meeting at this stage head-to-head -head on the way up. Doesn't happen very often. No, you've got two good, solid, world-ranked heavyweights meeting head-to-head -head here tonight. And somebody's going to really take a big back step mm -hmm. monetarily. Somebody's going forward, making a lot of money in this business. If I was managing either one of them, I would have avoided this fight. No doubt about it. All right, our first fight tonight, the light flyweights. The champion is Michael Carbajal. This is a non-title fight. He told us, though, he's more focused for this fight tonight and some of his recent title fights, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Well, I think Michael Carvajal is focused for all of his fights, but I think there was a little bad blood between the two. I think Jesus Chong and his people, his manager, were uh, contending that Michael Carvajal has been ducking Chong. He is a tough opponent, but uh, uh, he's serious for all his fights. I think he's focused uh, just like he is for all his other fights. All right, normally we start with our Goosen's Corner, an inside look at the boxers. Let's begin with Jesus Chong. Right. Jesus Chong is a tough, uh, tough fighter out of the West Coast, and... Uh, uh, what he's got to do tonight is really force Carvajal to brawl. And by doing that, he's got to stay inside with him. That's where he does his best work. And uh, use a lot of angles when he is inside. Try to move left and right on Carvajal. Carvajal is pretty much of a stand-up fighter. That's what he'd like to do to win this fight. And here is Jesus Chong, 15-3 and three with 12 knockouts. If you're wondering about the last name of Chong, he is Mexican, but his grandfather, Chinese. Hard puncher, but as is the case with many Mexican fighters, he is susceptible to cuts. Let's take a look at Goosen's corner for the IBF light flyweight champ, Michael Carbajal. 
Well, the champ's got his hands full tonight, even though it's a non-title bout. What he's got to do, though, is do what Johnny Tapia did to Chong, and that was box him from the outside. He was very successful doing that. Stay off the ropes. That's what Chong would like to put him. And don't get lured, lured into an inside fight with, uh, with, Tommy, with um, Jesus Chong. Kind of look at Michael Carbajal. 21-0 with 13 knockouts. Won that controversial silver medal, losing to the Bulgarian questionable decision in the 1988 Summer Games in Seoul. And we'll take a look at the tail of the tape for our first fight this evening between Carbajal and Chong. Carbajal is 24 years old to Chong's 26. Carbajal a bit taller, about even in weight, and the reach even. And our rules for this 10-round non-title fight. New Jersey rules in effect, the 10-point must system. Standing eight count. Three knockdown rule as well. Cannot be saved by the bell in any of the 10 rounds. And either the doctor or the referee can stop the fight. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's Convention Hall by way of Donald J. Trump's Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tonight, Top Rank Incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. These bouts tonight are all sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. The three judges for this first bout will be Eugene Grant, Al DeVito, and Frank J. Cairo. And the man in charge of all the action once the bell rings, the referee is Frank. Cappuccino. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the first of our three specially scheduled bouts tonight. This one's scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in the light flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the leopard trunks with black trim and weighs 108 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California. His professional record, 15 victories with 12 KOs. Only three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Shinito Tigre Chong. And across the ring in the red corner, his opponent wearing the white trunks with red trim, weighing an even 109 pounds. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. This 1988 Olympic silver medalist is undefeated as a professional with a record of 21 and 0, 13 KOs. He currently holds the IBF Light Flyweight Championship of the World, title not on the line tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Las Manitas de Piedra, Michael Carbajal. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions by the New Jersey Control Board. Both of you shake hands. Shake hands. And Michael Carbajal has held the title since July of 90 when he beat Kitakasim of Thailand. His last two fights, including the one we did in Davenport, Iowa, against Hector Patry, went the distance. But Carbajal says, I think I can take this guy out. It's scheduled for 10. Right off the bat, one thing I noticed, Len, is they're not using the six-ounce gloves like they said they were going to use. I guess at the rules meeting it was changed. They're using eight-ounce Everlast gloves. Quite a difference from the six-ounce Reyes gloves they were planning on using. See Chong trying to bob and weave and stay out of the way of Carbajal. Tough thing to do if you want to go the distance. You know, one final note on the glove issue is that these Everlast gloves have a lot more padding up front. The Reyes gloves are called a puncher's glove. Uh, they can do a lot more damage. And here tonight, it's going to be harder for a knockout with these bigger gloves. Carbajal landing with the right. I know you're impressed with Chong. You don't think he's a pushover, Joe. No, he isn't a pushover. I've, I've seen him qu uh, fight quite a few times out in Los Angeles, a few times at the Forum. He's uh, beaten uh, undefeated fighter Famacito Gomez. He won the NABF title against George Roman in Mexicali. Uh, Isaiah Zamudio, he had a tough, tough, close fight, 12-round decision with. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a durable, tough fighter. Carbajal is, is about as cool a customer as you will ever see in the ring. It's Chong trying to throw the combinations. Carbajal looking for his spot. Caught him with a beautiful left uppercut right there. Carbajal caught Chong with him. Working the body, Carbajal is midway through the first round. 
Good right hand from Carvajal. And another right, Wabu Chong. Well, that's the third straight right hand he's, he's, he's put uh, Chong with. And if he keeps catching him with those, his fight might end early, uh, regardless of the size of the gloves. And another strong right hand from Carvajal. Carvajal missing after Chong connected with the right. Carvajal a little bit wild. I think he senses that he had Chong in a bit of trouble with the right hands. One big right hand right in the middle of the round. If, if I were in uh, Carvajal's corner, I'd just tell him keep using that jab and straight right hand because he hasn't missed him with it yet. Another good right from Carvajal. Sean's throwing more punches, but Carvajal is much more effective as the first round comes to a close. Well, we'll see what the corner tells him. When he gets inside, he doesn't know what to do inside, okay? He, he just starts dum -dum -dum, throwing little bush and ass punches. When he comes out of there, he's got his hands down and he's got his head straight up. Once he finishes that little flurry, okay, you got to step in with the hook, come back with the right hand, okay? His head is right there. All right, here we go. Go back to a little replay here. There's Chong trying to work the body standing straight. That was that right hand exactly. which I said wobbled him. Exactly. Later on in the round, Carball missing with that wild left hook. Came with the right uppercut to the body and short right hand to the head. And if you're not familiar with the Carvajal story, that was his brother Danny who was his trainer. Is now we eavesdrop on the Chong corner. And as the, the first replay showed us, exactly what Danny Carvajal told his brother to do was when, when Chong pulls out of the middle, he's got his head straight up after a flurry inside to clip him when he pokes his, pokes his head up like that. Now Chong moving away as the second round begins. Got some hard punches in the first round. Chong tries the uppercut. Lancing right from Carvajal. See, now Carvajal could be boxing, but it's his nature to get inside, and somebody challenges him, he's going to get inside and mix it up with him. He could be keeping him at bay with that jab and right hand. Mm -hmm. But uh, he likes to fight. Chong wants to mix it up. He's going right at Carvajal with the combination. And landed a good liver shot with the, of his own uh, to, to Carvajal's body. Chong is standing right there, Joe. He's well, not moving away. Right, living up to uh, his... his uh, prediction that that's exactly what Carvajal likes to do and, and will do in this fight and he has been doing it and Carvajal's got a little cut over his left eye it looks like it's in the you know, on the eyebrow in the corner of the left eye already and that's the danger of getting inside with a right, with a right. awkward guy like Jesus Chong here I think it was caused by a butt trip it could well have been but uh, he just got clipped with a good left hook uh, that uh, Jesus Chong landed on Carvajal whether it was a head or a punch, the, the point is that Carvajal could be really fighting from the outside here, and he's not doing it. Now working in the clinches. And now Sean lands a strong right against Carvajal. And he has Carvajal in the corner. And Sean goes to work, and Carvajal comes back at him. Good exchange here, late in the second round. Good body shot in the uppercut from Carvajal. Coming right back. Chong delivers another right hook. Most of that damage by Chong was done while Carvajal was along the ropes there. Carvajal coming in close. The heads are together. Nah, nah, come on, come on, you're wrestling, you're wrestling, Michael. <laughs> Frank Cappuccino. Referee says the Carvajal's resting. Oh, right hand from Carvajal. 
Well, you know, it looked like Chong went into a mental lapse there. He had his hands down and he was standing a foot away from Carvajal and inviting him to hit him. Final seconds of the second round. Chong is all over the place. You know, he's, he's got his head up one minute, it's down at your waist the next. It's a difficult guy to fight. Absolutely. Carvajal as a result, looking a bit awkward here in the second round. Oye, te estás dejando para atrás. Cada vez que tienes para atrás, te está pegando. Si le vas para frente, le vas a pegar. Te está pegando. ¿Eh? No te ve que eso, no te ve que eso, no te ve Here's the, uh, the first flurry where Chong had Carbajal trapped in the corner, landed a little sneaky right hand over the shoulder and a left uppercut. Just missed with that one there. Chong fight, or Carbajal fighting his way out of the corner. Here's later on in that round where Carbajal comes back. Bingo, landed that right hand. Wasn't flush, but it was a good right hand. But uh, Chong just standing around with his hands down. It was kind of uh, strange that he would do that. They're working on, the, you can't see it from this angle, but they're working on the eyebrow area over the left eye of Carbajal. Oh, Let's go, Red Corner. Come on, Red Corner. Third That's round of what's turned out to be a very interesting fight thus far. Through two rounds, uh, CompuBox has got Carbajal landing 50% of his punches compared to 32% uh, by Chong. Chong tries to get Carbajal again in the corner. Certainly didn't see this. Davenport, Iowa, with Hector Patry. Missing wildly, Carvajal is. Well, what, what Chong has over a, a, a Patry is that he can punch. And he's been in with a lot bigger guys also. He's fought all the way to Bantamweight. And uh, this is one of the few fights that Chong has had at 108 pounds. He'll fight at flyweight, 112 pounds, junior Bantamweight or Bantamweight. There's no blood coming from that... Uh, Small cut that you detected over the left eye of Carvajal. That was a nick, but some of those nicks can turn into nasty cuts later on in the, in the fight. Carvajal's getting frustrated at all? Well, if it is, it's by his own doing, because he, he could really could be making this fight a little bit easier for himself. By doing that, using the jab, keeping him off balance, keeping Chong off balance. Just like that, staying tall. Body shot, Carvajal. Another body shot from Carvajal Break. inside. Break. See, Carvajal's got a... He's, got, he's great at... When, when somebody's trying to tie him up with one arm, he keeps that other hand busy, whether he's tied up or not, and works the body with him. Right hand grazing blow, and then Sean responds with a right of his own. That's because Carvajal put his head down right in the middle for, for Chong to hit. He lowered himself into Chong's range. Just like that. Head fainting from Chong as he moves in on Carvajal. Chong, a busy fighter. Again, goes to the body. Good left hand from Carvajal. Oh, and he puts his hands down and catches the left of the body. What's that all about? I have no idea why he goes into those little uh, momentary lapses, but it's not doing him any good because Carvajal's a tremendous body puncher. Those have got to take a lot of steam out of you later on in the fight. Sean works the body and then an uppercut from him. Final 30 seconds of the third round. Took to the liver, delivered by Carvajal, really doubled over Jesus Chong. See the mouthpiece. Let's go. Now getting exposed of Chong. Chong's complaining about a headbutt or something because he, he tapped right. his head to uh, Frank Cappuccino, the referee, as if to say he headbutted me. Right. Which is quite possible. There's a lot of head movement in there. Hey, Frankie's banging the shit out of me, man. What's the matter, Frank? Frank, he, he just keeps grabbing him, man. He don't let him. You got to let, let him fight inside, huh? Come on, Frank. I like to do whatever they want now until they're tied up. <laughs> Give me 
the exchange between Danny Carvajal and Frank Cappuccino. Our guest judge tonight, the fine boxing writer of the New York Post, Mike Marley, is with us. And Mike, how have you scored it thus far? Well, I've got it a sweep, uh, Lennon, Joe. Uh, Carvajal clearly in control. This is not the Chong from the comedy duo of Cheech and Chong. There's well. nothing funny about him. He's a serious fighter, but I think Carvajal is pressing too hard for a knockout. He should relax a little bit, box a little more, go in different directions, and I think he would do better, even though he is sweeping the bout. Got a good look there at the little cut. And, and it's an interesting point you brought up, Mike, because I asked Carvajal about that this morning, if he would be more anxious to go for a knockout because of how his fights have gone the last couple of times. He sort of alluded yes, but then backed away and said, well, I'll box and do what I have to do. You know, the wrap on the light flyweights is they, they never can get the big dollars. And I think one thing a light flyweight has to do is occasionally come up with an exciting knockout as opposed to just taking guys the distance. Fans don't want to pay to see that as often as the, the boxing purists might. Well, Carbajal's got a, a, a fairly decent knockout ratio. But you got to remember, you've got some tremendous athletes in this division. And when you get to this stage of the game, this you know, when you get to this upper echelon of fighter, they just don't get knocked out that easily. You know? from Carvajal. Sean comes back low and a big body blow from the left hand of Carvajal. Those type of punches really make a knockout come easier because what you do is you start lowering the guard of your opponent when you start laying body shots like that. In. Grazing right from Sean, but uh, think back to that left hand here in the fourth round from Carvajal. That was a telling blow right there. Another body blow from Carvajal. Well, what Carvajal is doing, he's really counter-punching well with the body. When Chong throws a left hook, uh, Carvajal responds with his own, right almost immediately at the same time to his body. Chong throws a right hand, he lays right in there just like that and throws it right back. <laughs> Trying to catch your opponent mid-scream in the middle of a punch. Just like that right there. He's laying in some beautiful body shots. Another left hook to the body from Carvajal. Another right. And yet another one. Oh, that's eventually going to set up a shot to the head that could end this thing. Oh, that's an idiot. He went two right hands to the body and then followed up with a straight right to the head. Sean trying to hang in there. Final minute of the fourth round. Carvajal in control of the fight to this one. <laughs> jab to set up that right hand. They just banged heads a little bit more on the side of that eye of Carvajal. Again, no blood coming. Carbo Carvajal's really waiting too much. Uh, you know, he could be using that jab and getting off first, catching uh, Chong as he comes in, and he's not really doing that. And that's maybe why he's more effective on the inside, because he, he may feel more comfortable on the inside, because he, he just doesn't look comfortable from the outside. And that may be due to Chong's awkwardness and head movement. Fourth round, winding down. And the crowd coming just a little bit restless here. Chong motioning to Frank Cappuccino that uh, Carvajal was hitting late on the break again because he was warned for that last round. Yes, he was. He's getting tired right now. Let's take a look at this replay here. Chong misses with a wild right hand. Carvajal back to the body, the right uppercut, and bingo, right to the midsection. You were kind of screened out by the back of Jesus Chong, but believe me, that left hook landed right in the solar plexus. Double him over. Yeah, that was the punch of the night thus far. Here are some statistics through four rounds. Well, Carvajal is a runaway with the punches landed right here, but Chong is keeping up at least with the amount of punches thrown, and Hopefully, he'll start landing a higher percentage of punches. Keep working, man. Keep working. Okay, okay. Let's go, fellas. Well, they were working on the mouth of uh, Michael Carbajal also in that one. So he's got a nick over his eye and a cut in his mouth. As we start the fifth round of a 10-round non-title fight, Junior Flyweights, Michael Carbajal is the champion against Jesus Chong.
left hand from Carvajal. John with the grazing, looping right. Came dangerously close, but uh, it really looks like Carvajal's the much stronger puncher. You know, you see uh, Jesus Chong against other fighters, and he looks tremendously strong, but against Carvajal, there's something about Carvajal. He just looks too strong for this division at 108 pounds. Regardless of the fact that he hasn't had a knockout in the past two fights. Get up, loose. Get up, loose. Get them hands loose. Is it possible Chong can come up with one lucky punch, Joe? Well, you know, I don't think Carvajal's the type of guy that's going to get taken out with one punch. What he's got to do is, oh, look like that's been a little bit low, exactly. He's got to try to wear Carvajal out by mauling him, roughing him up on the inside, and land a few consecutive punches to put him on, you know, Queer Street, and then maybe follow up with a knockout punch. You know, Chong's definitely a good fighter, but Carvajal is just really the class of his division at this point. Working the body and then the left hook to the head, Carvajal. You're right about the power of Chong. A lot of those punches lack a lot of steam. Well, Carvajal does a good job of stifling those punches on the inside. Chong landing some good yeah, right hand for Chong and another one. Chong gets Carvajal in the corner. Ah, Carvajal great, tries great. to get off the ropes as Frank Cappuccino breaks them. <laughs> well, he, he literally almost caught Michael Carvajal with his pants down because right. while, while he was pulling his trunks up, Chong tried to jump in at him and, of course, Carvajal put his guard up very quickly. Chong trying to sneak that right hand yeah, over that uh, lazy jab of Carvajal's there. An unsuccessful Carvajal uh, run away right. from it. Chong trying to load up for a big right hook. Came very close on a couple of occasions. <laughs> Carvajal continues to work Chong's body, and Chong responds with a body shot. In all fairness to Carvajal on that last low blow, Chong kind of deflected the punch low with his uh, forearm. Right, and that happens quite often. The referee takes that into consideration when he sees a punch like that uh -huh. straight, straight low. Ooh, he just wobbled him right there. That's that's the first time in this fight that Chong has wobbled Michael Carvajal and his legs, his legs buckled a little bit there. It was a good right hand. The right Chong. hand to the temple. And that's it for the fifth round. This is, what, this is what Chong needs to do, is try to wear down Michael Carvajal and maybe lull him into a false sense of security and land some of those punches. Here we go, a little replay here. Carvajal reaching in, and then really the, 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 uh, the punch there would have been low, but it hit off his forearm. Here's, here's Chong coming on here. He took a jab but countered with a good right hand. And he follows uh, Carvajal's head up right there with the right hand. Here we go. I think this is where Chong wobbled Carvajal, probably towards the end of the round. Bingo, right there, really right below the ear. And knocked uh, Carvajal off balance a little bit and made him retreat. And it caught him with an uppercut right there. Caught him with another one, yeah. So a good finish to the round for Chong. And the, uh, the connect percentage coming down a little bit yeah. from Carvajal from 52 to 45 percent. Both throwing a similar number of punches as we start the sixth round. And we'll see if that was a wake-up call for Carvajal there in the fifth round. But Chong lands another right hand. And, and doing exactly what Chong said he was most likely doing. He was standing there waiting for Jesus Chong right in front of him. Here's Chong beating Carvajal with a punch three successive exchanges in a row. And, uh, well, that's going to you know, tell a tale later on in this fight if Carvajal doesn't wake up. And he took two left. Two more. With two left. And a Chong again. <laughs> and uh, Chong complaining about a low blow, perhaps. Well, and Cappuccino standing right there in front of it. I, it. He may have thought it was borderline right on the, on the belt line, but it did look a little low. But Chong has now taken control from the latter stages of the fifth here into the sixth. Well, this is his fight, right in the middle of the ring with Carvajal, not giving him much movement, not really using that uh, the boxing ability he's got. Both fighting flat-footed here in the sixth round. Oh, oh 
Strong right hand to the body from Carvajal. Uh, there's, there's some beautiful counter punching there by Carvajal, but Chong takes it and keeps coming back. He's going to make Carvajal counter punch all night. Halfway through the sixth round, and Chong lands again. Boy, he is an I awkward, break. awkward kid to fight, this Jesus Chong. He's, he's standing up one minute, he's down at your knees the next, he's turned southpaw, he's turned right-handed. It's hard to figure him out. You know, Carvajal told us in the room earlier today, I said, you a little worried about this kid's awkwardness? And he said, yeah. He said, really, I, I like fighting a more stylish fighter. It's easier to predict sure. where the punches are going to come from. Their right hand counter off. See, and that was a low blow. That was a low blow. Chong hit him with an overhand right. Carvajal countered with a right uppercut and hit him low. It was a low blow. Cappuccino saw it and gave him a little time to recover. But those type of punches, even though they aren't legal, they take it out of you. Sure. No point deduction there. The legal ones hurt bad enough. The illegal ones really hurt. <laughs> Chong has Carvajal against the ropes again. Or here's Chong feigning with that right hand, then coming back with that left uppercut. You just don't know where he's going to come from. One's a world champion, the other one an unknown quantity, and Chong's acquitted himself quite well. Jesus Chong is the NABF champion, though. so you know, in a, in, in a sense, he's right up there in the, in the rankings. I think we got a little replay here of the uh, of the low blow, and let's see if it bears out the fact that it did stray low. Now, now I understand they they don't have it, so they must not have had a good clear shot at it. But uh, uh, it must have been low. Okay, let's check out Mike Marley's scorecard. Mike, what do you got? At this point, I've got it 59-55. Uh, I gave that last round, the sixth round. To Chung, he started a rally at the end of the fifth round with uh, two clubbing right hands. And I, I'm surprised that Cappuccino didn't take a point away from Carbajal in that round because they've both been Very hitting low persistently. Let's see. Uh, we do have we do have a good shot at it. Let uh, let's see the uh, shot of the low ball. Here it is. Chong throws an overhand right. Here comes the counter. Boom. Yes, sir. And hey, you don't get any lower than that. Yeah. So clear cut and no point deduction. We start the seventh round. I agree with you, Mike Marley. A good sixth round for Jesus Chong. See if he can keep it going when he started late in the fifth round. Well, Chong really closing the gap percentage-wise. The compu box in the sixth round. Chong again with the combination, Joe. Had uh, Carvajal 48 Has him up against the ropes. It hits again. And another right hand. To 41%. You're right here. And Chong really is coming on now. And this is where Carvajal doesn't want to be. Along the ropes or in a corner. And Carvajal is in danger here in this fight. I'm not saying serious danger, but at the moment... Well, the left eye is almost completely cut, or completely uh, shut, and... Uh, oh, Chong... Good right hand from Carvajal. And wobbled him. And why Chong is going southpaw, I don't know right now, because he was being very successful right-handed. That left eye is a swollen right above the eye, and that's what's forcing it down and, and halfway closed right now on Carvajal. Sean could work that left eye in much better shape. But you're right, he's back to the southpaw, Joe. Just landed another right hand off of that eye, and believe me, if that's shut, Carvajal could be in big trouble, and he's very fortunate this fight isn't going 12 rounds because we'd only be at the halfway mark at this point instead of three-quarters of the way through. Sean is staring at that eye and trying to zone in on it, but Carvajal comes out of there with a right. Sean is back to right hand. His Chong is one tough cook. He really belongs in the top ten in the world. Uh, well, he's ranked 21st, Joe, right. by the WBC. He, he, he's, the, he's one of the few opponents that has given Michael Carvajal this much trouble in a fight, including the world champion that, uh, that Carvajal fought, Kid Akasem. Carvajal does have a world title fight scheduled for December against Robinson Cuestas, Phoenix. Oh. But Sean, Cuestas should uh, get these tapes real fast if he's not watching right now. Well, Carvajal landed a nice little straight right hand after taking a few good shots from uh, from Chong, but they're far and few between at this point. Carvajal takes another combination, and Chong goes to work on Carvajal again by the ropes. Carvajal comes away. Open! Open! 
Chong from the latter stages of the fifth round is taking control. Oh. Chong got wobbled by that left hook. He came up with one of his own hooks. Had his right hand down and caught a hook in his wobble and in trouble. I believe me, Carvajal would like to put him away right now and get out of this fight. Another right hand from Carvajal. There he goes after Chong. It's only 23 seconds left in this round, and it's fortunate for, for Chong because he's really on, on uh, wobbly legs right now. Keep in mind, you can't be saved by the bell as you near the 10-second mark. Chong trying to fight his way out of it. His hands are, Chong's hands are coming dangerously low right now and uh, really coming, coming close to getting knocked out with that left hook by Carvajal. I'm getting ready, Michael. Con calmado, okay? Don't get over it. Danny Carbajal using the end swell, which is a frozen piece of metal, and he's trying to rub the blood from the middle of the eye out to the side to relieve the swelling. Here's a replay. The counter punch right here. Here comes Chong up. Bingo with his right hand down and takes a good left hook on the chin. Yeah, that was it. He's really been getting away with dropping his hand all night. But this is one of the few times it caught up to him. Here's later on in the round. Chong coming in, standing straight up. And Bingo catches a straight right, right hand yeah. off Carbajal. Backs him up, but didn't hurt him as badly right. as that left hook did. Yeah, the earlier left was smart. And in that seventh round, fairly close. Well, Al Stanky, Dub Huntley, and Alfred uh, Romero really working over uh, Jesus Chong in the corner, trying to revive him and get some life back into him. Carbajal's left eye half closed. Chong comes out swinging again. Looks like he never went down from that punch because he woke up real quickly. Oh, good right hand from Shaw. <laughs> get him, get him, get get them hands loose. The Carvajal with a strong right. Oh, Shaw comes back. Beautiful three punch combination. Under and over with the left hand and then a straight right hand. Not all of them landing flush, but uh, uh, amazing. He's got these reflexes after taking a shot like he did and going down in his eighth round. He survived half of the eighth round. He's scheduled for 10. Boy, he's got that sneaky right hand left uppercut right over the top. Uh, and he's been landing on Carter Hall most of the night. Right there. Little left uppercut hook. Wind these guys up and let them go. They just don't stop. I and mean, this is a tremendous competitive fight. Barbo with another right hand to turn the head of Chong. Cappuccino has to separate the boxers again as we near the 32nd mark of the eighth round. Staying in there. Another right hand from Carvajal. Sean down here in the eighth round. And he comes back with the right hands. Oh, he just got lit up by it. Got lit up by a beautiful left hook. Another right hand from Carvajal. Look at this kid. He just keeps taking it and coming back. It's like that right hand really woke him up. It didn't do any damage, but probably really woke him up and, and made him fight harder in this fight. So despite being knocked down in the eighth, Chong survives the round. You can see Carvajal's eye there. Close it. 
try and load up and just wait for that one, okay? Well, Chong's got Michael Carbajal bleeding from the eye, the nose, and the mouth right now. Even though Carbajal's ahead in this fight, and it's a non-title fight, it, it's really, he's fighting as hard as if it's, it's a world title fight. Here's the knockdown. Bingo. Oh, that was right on the chin. I thought it was a little bit higher, but that was right on the chops. And uh, really springs right back up. And look, look, at, look at Chong here. Now, this is directly after the knockdown. Left hand, left uppercut, straight right hand. Joe, if you tuned in right now and just looked at their faces, you'd think Sean was winning this fight. What an upset. Michael Carvajal's <laughs> Carvajal looks beat up. Look at him. And yet, uh, make no mistake about it, he's most likely ahead on the cards. Now imagine if these were six ounce ever or six ounce Reyes gloves. I mean, this could really that could really have been the turning point in this fight. This Carvajal going to the eight ounces. Oh, six ounce. Yeah, going to eight ounces in Everlast, which are padded more in the front. Uh huh. The uh, the Reyes have more padding in the wrist and less up front, which makes for a, a much harder punch. Good point. Ninth round. Carvajal's corner telling him, don't uh, keep loading up looking for that one knockout punch. And Sean with the combination. Now, if I were Carvajal, I'd be looking for a knockout punch to get this guy out of my face. Right. because That's not what Danny told him. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, what he meant to do really is, is at least be a little bit more precise with your punches. He saw him winging a few right hands and getting a little wild with them. You know, if Chong hadn't have been knocked down in that round, it was actually a very close round, if not maybe in, in Chong's favor. Carbajal basically abandoned the body attack. You know, he was throwing a lot more body shots in the uh, early and middle rounds, but now he's There's really the right hand. Yeah. There he tried the body with the left. He had one good right hand in there, but not as much action in this round as all the others tonight. There's been a lot of punches thrown. Both these guys got to be fatigued. Now Sean goes back to the southpaw. Switching up. These guys put every bit of power they can behind every punch. Right. And it's amazing, really, that they still have the snap and the, the power they got left. Carvajal lands another body shot. Man. Warned again. Keep the punches up, but again a warning, as we saw in one of the other cards earlier before we came on the air. He doesn't deduct points. Cappuccino is a liberal referee. Well, they aren't the type of punches that are really uh, debilitating the, the opponent, so... He's, he's trying to be fair to him and not really uh, try to give him the benefit of the doubt here. Again, Sean had Carvajal cornered for the moment. Coming down to 20 seconds remaining in the ninth round. Oh. Sean connected. A couple of lefts and then the right. From the southpaw style, which is doing him some justice right now. <laughs> he's gone back to righty. As unorthodox a fighter as you'll find, Jesus Chong. He's given Michael Carvajal nine rounds of boxing thus far. Oh. And as Chong sat down, he looked exhausted over in his corner as we peek in now at Carvajal. A little bit of blood coming from the nose. Not much of uh, any marks on Chong's face. Which is amazing because he's taking some real solid shots. All right, let's check in with our guest judge tonight, Mike Marley from the New York Post. Michael, what do you have for us? Well, Chong has rallied. Uh, really, his best rally of the night was after the round he got knocked down. Uh, I made that round, however, at 10-9 because I thought Chong not only did he survive, but he came back so strongly in the round that it justified having a one-point edge in the round. But uh, bottom line, Carbajal uh, can only lose by knockout, at least on my unofficial card, ahead by seven points. You have him ahead by a lot of points, but it seems like the fight may be a little bit closer in reality. Do you well, know what I'm saying? Well, I think Chung doesn't sustain his assault. He lands a shot, a, a second shot, but then he, he fades. Come on, come on, come on. Tenth and final round. Cappuccino urges them to touch gloves, and here we go.
It was a knockdown in the eighth. Carvajal's eye not closed. It was closing earlier, but Chong unable to take advantage of that. A little bit of blood trickled from the nose and the eye of Carvajal. No points deducted for any of Carvajal's low blows. That's the status as we wend our way into the 10th round. 10th and final round, and Chong's really got to let it all hang out here and go for a knockout, uh, regardless of what happens to him, because he's way behind on points right now, in my estimation. It's been a tough, close fight, but I just think Carvajal's really pulled out most of the rounds here. Carvajal with the right getting in there, and responding with the right of his own. Tries an uppercut. He's getting tagged here in the 10th. Lancing left from Sean. Goes after Carvajal here. There's just so, just so, so much good competition in these lighter weight divisions that even guys that aren't highly regarded, you know, by the uh, ratings and the boxing commissions, uh, are still tough and durable guys. And there's a million guys out there like Jesus Chong that are just give any champion a good fight. Sean did something very, very nice there, though. He rolls with that punch, even though the force of it takes his head around. He's rolling with it and absorbing a lot of the punch. Marvel slips down. No knockdown. Wow. You've got those painted Budweiser signs there in the corner. And those are the blood coming from the left eye. His left eye virtually closed. And Sean trying to end it. Or at least deliver a knockout blow in the final minute of the fight. Well, it Look is. Look at Carvajal's face, bloody. It is closed, and uh, he's just lucky this is the last round because if it was a 12 round fight, he'd and be Sean in danger. Him and then Carvajal came right. back. Yeah, the blood right. all over Carvajal's trunks. Well, that, that nick has been uh, opened up wide now, and the, blow is, uh, the blood is really flowing freely. Carvajal with the right. Chalk looks to be in relatively good shape. Delivering some blows here. He's trying to end it in the final seconds. Let him go. Let him out. Let him out. What a tough kid, this Carvajal. Look at that because face on Carvajal. He's trying all the credit in the world, but... The champion will win this fight, undoubtedly, on points, but he certainly paid the price. Good fight. Great fight. Great, great competitive fight. And the fans should appreciate these lower weight divisions because they put on a lot of skill, power, courage, everything you want to see. Look at that face. Wow. See, and that cut is, is a terrible cut. It's in the eyelid, the worst place a cut could be. If this was a 12-round fight, you might have had this fight stop on that cut. Would that in any way jeopardize this fight in a couple of months? Certainly, it certainly can. Even though a uh, cut can heal in three weeks to a month, you need even time after that for the, for the um, scar to really heal up and to, and to get strong. So we'll take a look at a couple of replays here in the 10th round. Sean with the uppercut. And there's the right hand from Carvajal, which backed Sean away again. And action here in the 10th round. And now, let's go to Michael Buffer for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Frank J. Cairo scores about 97-92. Eugene Grant scores at 97-92. Aldevito has it, 97-93 for the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, Las Manitas de Piedra, Michael Carbajal. And you do not see Carvajal jumping around as they continue to work on his eye. About as low-key victory a celebration as you will ever see in boxing. As Carvajal wins the unanimous decision, the scorecards very similar. Two 97-92s and Al DeVito from New Jersey, 97-93. Carvajal the winner by unanimous decision. But it was not easy. He knocked down Chong in the eighth round suffered that cut over the left eye Carbajal did and uh, Chong acquitted himself quite well and they uh, continue to work on Carbajal 
which is preventing us from uh, getting Joe Goosen close to him. All right, so that does it for the first fight, as he is the winner, but he continues to receive the majority of the medical attention. So let's go back to our host now, Cambrell Marshall. Thank you very much, Len Berman, and certainly coming up, uh, the main event we want you to make sure you keep in mind coming up tonight, the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World to be contested. The champion, Merciless, Ray Mercer, taking on Tommy the Duke Morrison. That's our main event. We certainly hope you'll stay tuned and wait for that to come around. Now, Michael Carbajal, the IBF Junior Flyweight Champion, having his hands full tonight. He'll take that win any way he can get it. Heading back to Phoenix, where he, of course, will be the main event, or scheduled to be the main event in December. Also on that December card from Phoenix, a unification of uh, two middleweight championships. So uh, IBF middleweight champion to my immediate left, James Tony, against WBA middleweight champ, Mike the Body Snatcher McCallum. Now, James, you've had the championship since May. Mike has had the championship for a couple years, 40-some odd fights. What do you know about him? What are you going to have to do to win the championship? Well, Mike McCallum, I know a lot about him. I mean, I've watched him when I, when I was an amateur, you know, coming up, beating, beating the likes of Milton McCoy and Donald Curry. We beat those guys pretty handily, but right now, as a middleweight, he's doing pretty good. I haven't seen his last couple of fights. I've been out of town, but, you know, I hear he's talking about taking me to school. <laughs> I'm a very bad student, so teach me. Mike, you... you you're the veteran. You've been around for a long time. Are you ready to unify this thing? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I've been, as you say, around again a long time. And I think the time is now for Mike McCollum. And uh, Tony is a good fighter. He had beaten the likes of uh, Michael Nunn. And he's very confident of that. And uh, my fight with him going to be a very good fight. But like I say again, I will take him to school. And um, I'm looking for a great fight, so don't miss it. Good for you, you got a lot of respect for him. He's a young fighter. Oh, How about you? He's your elder statesman, you know that. You gotta yeah. give him a little respect. Um, hey, you can't take away from the guy. He's a great fighter. He's been around for, you know, he's been champ for seven years. You know, and now it's James Tony's time. I'm the best middle in the world. And my, I know I'll stay for Mike McCallum to give me a chance to prove that December 13th. You know, he, I have, you know, I have respect for him. He's a great fighter. He's been around like, for a long time with Tommy Aaron. Roberto Duran, all of them. He deserve to be up there with him, but you know, now's my time. All right, well, we've heard from both of you. The elder statesman, James Lights Out, Tony, Mike, the body snatcher, McCallum. Good luck to you both in your, uh, when you meet up in December in Phoenix. We look forward to seeing that happen. That, of course, will be on TVKO. Coming up, we go from middleweights to the heavyweights, Mr. Hip.